Cleanup after the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident has created a huge amount of radioactive waste. An NHK survey has found that some of it has not been designated as such and is being stored across a wide area. The government measures radioactive materials in rice, straw and soil. Any measuring over 8,000 becquerels per kilogram is designated as radioactive waste. The waste is then stored and eventually disposed of. However, it's up to municipalities and farmers whether to apply for the designation. <laughs> the NHK survey found that at least 3,100 metric tons of undesignated waste is being kept in 30 municipalities across seven prefectures. <laughs> Some municipalities say they did not report that they were storing the waste in order to prevent unfounded concerns. <laughs> Others report that even if the waste were designated as radioactive, it would still need to be stored due to snags in building disposal facilities. The, the central government plans to investigate undesignated waste and consider new disposal methods. A court in central Japan has ordered a utility company to suspend the operations of two nuclear reactors. The decision is the first of its kind affecting reactors that are online. The residents had filed for the court injunction in January of last year. They said reactors number three and number four at the Takama power plant are not safe enough. Otsu District Court ruled that the operator of the plant has not given a sufficient explanation about how to prevent or deal with accidents. It noted that the operator's safety measures are based on an estimation of the maximum possible tremor from only the past 14 earthquakes. It said that method is not irrefutably scientific. The two reactors were restarted this year after clearing new, stricter regulations the government introduced after the Fukushima accident. The court injunction takes effect immediately. I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely overwhelmed. We managed to convey to the court just how passionately we feel about this issue. Officials with the plant operator Kansai Electric Power Company issued a statement. They said it's regrettable that the court failed to understand their arguments. They described the injunction as totally unacceptable and said they'll move quickly to appeal. The officials said in the meantime they'll start the process to shut down the number three reactor on Thursday morning. They said it will be fully offline within 10 hours. The number four reactor is already offline. Japan's top government spokesperson said Tokyo is keeping a close eye on the developments. Independent regulators spent a lot of time assessing the reactors at the Takahama plant. They judged that the reactors satisfied the world's toughest standards. The government respects this decision, and it will keep working to put reactors back online. Kansai Electric Power Company, or KEPCO, has asked the court to throw out an injunction ordering it to halt two nuclear reactors in central Japan. The Otsu District Court in Shiga Prefecture on Wednesday suspended the number three and four reactors of the Takahama plant in Fukui Prefecture. It said the operator had not fully explained how it would ensure safety. On Monday, KEPCO filed a petition to nullify the injunction. The utility says the court decision was unfair and was not an objective judgment on safety. It noted that the operator's safety measures are based on an estimation of the maximum possible tremor from only the past 14 earthquakes. It said that method is not irrefutably scientific. You have abused the public trust, you have abused your clients, you've abused your employees. Uh, that's it. Have a nice life. You're done. 
We will do our best to prove the safety of the reactors at the Takahama plant. We hope the court will nullify the injunction promptly. Overcharged people fees, misrepresented, manipulated, and now you're faking the disciplinary. Somebody would say, you know, you've lost your right to be in this business. KEPCO shut down the number three unit on Thursday, one day after the court injunction. The number four reactor was restarted on February 26th, but it went offline automatically three days later due to a malfunction. Uh, they got caught doing that, and they promised, they've got to say this slowly, otherwise I'll just break up and laugh in front of you, and that wouldn't look right. I'm a professor, after all. Um, they promised not to do this again. Uh, yes, exactly, right. Uh, it's the only reaction one could have. You either laugh or you drop dead crying uh, from this. Well, to talk about the state of nuclear energy in the United States, I'm joined by investigative journalist Paul DiRienzo, author of the upcoming book, Hidden History of Nuclear Power. Paul, thank you so much for joining us in our New York studio. Thank so, 20% of the energy in the U.S. comes from nuclear power. We have 99 nuclear reactors in the states. The biggest question here is, could Fukushima happen here in the United States, and is there any way that we can protect people from it? Well, there's actually over 400 nuclear plants operating around the world, and whether it's United States or any in the world, anywhere in the world, you have to ask yourself, are, are there any any Fukushima is waiting to happen. And uh, maybe in the United States, one of the most notorious reactors operating close to a city of mul many millions of people, uh, close to where I'm sitting right now, is Indian Point, mm -hmm. uh, 45 miles from New York City. And uh, we've discussed how that, uh, uh, previously on this program, how that nuclear power plant is, uh, uh, has had seven uh, very troubling errors in the last year and uh, people are wondering when the next one is going to come and and uh, you know th this is a reactor that has a problem with its uh, its operator the Entergy Corporation which has uh, uh, similar to TEPCO not been forthcoming and not been fully transparent with uh, the problems that that plant faces and where the public is sort of left in the dark as to really what the problems are and uh, this is repeated time and time again throughout the United States at other plants I mean some are better run than others but you have to think of those that are in California and other places that are near uh, earthquake faults, that are near potential volcanoes, that are near places where uh, uh, tremendous storms can happen and tornadoes can happen. And there's always the possibility of terrorist attack. Um, for example, Indian Point, it turns out, even though it's in New York State, is rated uh, the, the plant most uh, uh, most able to be damaged by a by an earthquake mm -hmm. because of where it's located and because uh, there's an earthquake fault that runs very near to where it is and uh, then there's other sort of like man-made potential disasters again referring to uh, Indian Point there is a 40 I believe 48 inch high pressure gas main running or planned to run within a few hundred yards of the uh, reactor site um, a, a, a burst gas main has a potential of, in its own right, de delivering a megaton or kilo, many kiloton range explosive force mm -hmm. if it were to, uh, to, uh, to burst. And right. so this is being run right next to a nuclear plant. And the reason comes down to cost. Time and time again, it really comes down to money. It's very difficult to buy land in Westchester County where this plant is, uh, where this pipe is to be built. The cheapest land, the land that's available, is already being used by a nuclear power plant. That's where they want to run it to save money. Um, you know, you see this time and time again with nuclear power where uh, TEPCO is a good example. Uh, it turns out after uh, many investigations and, and what we know of what happened at uh, Fukushima is that the uh, plant was... Uh, Oh, was not fully safe. I mean, right, the money right. wasn't spent. It wasn't prepared, and no one could have predicted the magnitude of that tsunami. But as you mentioned, the power plants here in the United States, a lot of them are very old. This is not a new source of power. Um, one of the things that I think is concerning is how we deal with the waste. Why, after all these decades of using nuclear power, have we not figured out a safe way to handle that waste? 
uh, basically because nobody wants to live near it. Uh, uh, you know, the waste was originally dumped in, in absolutely the wrong possible places w during the uh, Manhattan Project and during the Cold War. It was pretty much dumped wherever, uh, wherever they could find, and, and there was very little done to warn people about where it was dumped or to even keep records of where it was dumped. And people to this day, every other day, you're discovering somebody is living on top of a, a waste dump from even 70 and 80 years ago. So you can imagine what's happening today. Um, the fact of the matter is there is nothing you can do about nuclear waste except store it as far away from people for thousands and thousands of years. And how can you ever predict what will happen a thousand years from now mm -hmm. or a even a hundred years from now? How can you predict these all our great nations of the world will even exist then? We extract from these folks a promise never to do that again. And as they say to you if you call them up, uh, one of the first things out of every one of those paid telecommuter persons is, I apologize. Thank you. So what? The b behavior just continues. And the behavior continues because nothing at all, in any significant way, is done to deal with this. That's why I can present them to you here until I and you are bored beyond belief by a process that is outrageous and perpetual. We imagine that in the infinite universes parallel to this one, you are still staring dumbfounded at this video.